The Terrible Two by Mac Barnett and Jory John. Illustrated by Kevin Cornell. Read by Miss Claybaugh. Chapter 8. There was chaos in the halls. Who was it? Was it you? Principal Barkin hollered to everybody and nobody as students streamed past. Or was it you? None of the students were looking at Principal Barkin. They all knew better. Except for Miles, who had never seen an authority figure act quite like this. Actually, he'd never seen an authority figure look quite like this. Principal Barkin's face was so red that it was almost purple, like a grape, or a particularly nice sunset over the ocean back home. Miles's old principal used to get mad, but he never shouted, and he certainly never turned purple. This was mesmerizing. Was it you? Principal Barkin stuck a finger in Miles's face. The finger was long and pale white, since most of the blood in Barkin's body was currently in his head. Huh? Miles said. This was always a good thing to say when you might be in trouble. You! This is my school, and I've never seen you before! Why are you here? I'm the new kid, said Miles. Principal Barkin became slightly less purple. And what is your name, new kid? Miles. Well, I don't like that at all, said Principal Barkin. We already have a Niles at this school. My name is Miles. Well, that's better, but still a little confusing. Maybe you should go by Tony. Or Chuck. I'd rather go by my own name, Miles, said Miles. Well, you've got a little mouth on you, don't you? Which brings me back to my first question. Was it you? Was what me? Was it you who moved my car to the top of the stairs? No, sir. I don't even have a driver's license. And that's why you shouldn't have been driving my car, as well as many other reasons. But I didn't drive it. Said Miles. Then how did you get it to the top of the stairs? Said Barkin. And how do I get it back down? I don't know, sir. Principal Barkin squinted. Well, Miles, I'll have my eye on you. In fact, I'll have both my eyes on you. But in the meantime, welcome to Yawnee Valley Science and Letters Academy. How are you liking our town? Oh, it's fine, said Miles. Fine? Only fine? Yawnee Valley is a paradise. Grassy pastures and happy cows for miles, Miles. In fact, Yawnee Valley is the cow capital of the United States, this side of the Mississippi, excluding a couple of towns that cheat. I guess I'm just not very interested in cows, Miles said. Principal Barkin turned a little bit more purple. Orchid, perhaps. Somewhere in the distance, a cow mooed. Principal Barkin pointed toward the mooing. Then he pointed at Miles. Not interested in cows, said Principal Barkin. Not interested in cows? Well, said Miles. Um, Miles, if you are not interested in cows, it is simply because you are ignorant of the many reasons cows are interesting. Here, take this. Principal Barkin reached into his principal pack which non-principals called a fanny pack, and pulled out a booklet. <clears throat> it said, 1,346 interesting things you may or may not know about cows by the Yawnee Valley Dairy Council. Forward by Principal Barry Barkin. He thrust the book at Miles. Take it, read it, love it. It is probably my favorite book, and not just because I wrote the foreword. Thanks, said Miles. But I don't want to take your only copy. It's not my only copy. I've got a bunch more in my principal pack. Miles wondered if he could go to class now. But Principal Barkin didn't move out of his way. Now, one last piece of business. All our new students get paired up with a buddy. Someone who knows the lay of the land, the school rules, what to do, what not to do, including moving my car. 
since you are our only new student this year, you're lucky enough to have been assigned our best student, Niles. A small blonde boy wearing a sash that said school helper ran over to the principal. Miles, this is Niles Sparks, Principal Barkin informed him. Niles is the student who first told me about my car. Miles is the student who I suspect moved it. Niles held out his hand, his elbow flexed just slightly, his eye contact with Miles uninterrupted by blinks. He was the kind of kid who practiced his handshake alone in his room. There was a Niles at every school. The kiss-up, the do-gooder, the school snitch. And now Miles was supposed to shake his hand? Uh, sorry, I have a cold, Miles said. Niles lowered his arm. Principal Barkin frowned. Well, handshake or no, you two are school buddies. And a lucky thing for you, Miles. Niles is like a son to me. Of course, my own son also goes to the school and is also like a son to me. Somewhere in the distance, a cow mood. Niles, Principal Barkin said. Take Miles to room 22. Ms. Shandy is waiting. The two boys set off down the hallway. Nice sash, said Miles. Thanks, said Niles. Three facts about cows. Fact one. A cow's normal average body temperature is 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit. That sounds like a bit of a fever, but it's not. It's their normal average body temperature as previously stated. Fact two. A dairy cow can produce more than 25 gallons of milk per day. That's 400 cups or 6,400 tablespoons or 19,200 teaspoons, but only 15,987 imperial teaspoons. Still, that's a lot of milk. Fact three. Cows have 360 degree panoramic vision. Want to sneak up on a cow? You can't. They see you. Chapter 9 I have to ask you something, said Niles, and I promise I won't tell Principal Barkin, but were you actually the one who parked his f car in front of the school? No, said Niles. Okay, good, said Niles, because if you had, I probably would have told Principal Barkin. Yeah, said Miles. I'm sorry I lied, but I think sometimes it's okay to do something wrong if it helps you to do something right. Like ratting on me to Principal Barkin? Exactly. Principal Barkin relies on me to sniff out wrongdoers. Anyway, here's our classroom. Niles opened a blue door. There's Miss Shandy's desk. Is this the doorknob? Miles asked, grabbing the doorknob. Yes, that's the doorknob, said Niles. Miles found an empty seat far away from Niles. Niles noticed. He got up and came across the room and sat in the seat in front of Miles. Buddy system, Niles said, twisting around in his seat. We have to sit by each other. Great, Miles said. The girl next to Miles laughed. So, Niles is your buddy, huh? Niles answered for Miles. Yes, I'm his buddy. Miles, this is Holly Rash. She's sitting next to you. Hi, said Holly. What did you say your name was? Actually, I was the one who said his name, said Niles. I'm Miles, said Miles. Miles and Niles, said Holly. That's confusing. No, it's not, said Miles and Niles at the same time. Miles gave Niles a dirty look. Niles gave Miles a really happy look. Well, said Holly, if you're looking for real information about the school, let me know. Miles leaned over and whispered, Who's the school prankster? What? Holly asked. Who put the principal's car on the front steps? You mean it wasn't you? No, Miles said. It wasn't. Yeah, Holly said. I know. I was joking. The bell rang. A split second before the trilling stopped, the big kid, who looked like Principal Barkin, burst through the door. He took a look at the teacher's desk and, discovering it was still empty, st strolled down Miles's aisle. 
As the big kid passed Miles, he let his backpack hit Miles in the face. Watch it, Nimbus, the big kid said to Miles. Your face just hit my new backpack. The kid took a seat in the last row. So who's he? Miles asked. That's Josh, Josh Barkin, the principal's son, said Holly. That's Josh Barkin, the principal's son, said Niles. Josh is pretty much the worst kid in this school, said Holly. Well, I don't want to call anyone the worst. Josh is pretty mean sometimes, said Niles. Also, he really doesn't, or he really likes the word Nimbus for some reason. Can I hear from just one of you, said Miles, and could that one of you be her? Niles arranged his pencils on his desk into the shape of one big pencil. Holly said, well, the deal with Josh is that he never breaks any rules at school, but still comes up with nasty tricks, like hitting you in the face with his backpack. He never gets in trouble, said Holly, but everyone knows that he's a weasel. Still, he's our class president, said Niles, and he's probably going to be our principal one day, so we should respect him. That guy's the class president? Miles asked. Yep said Niles. Just like Principal Barkin was always class president, so was his father and his father and his father. The Barkins, from presidents to principals. That's what Principal Barkin is always saying. But if everyone knows he's a weasel, why does he win? Miles asked. He cheats, said Holly. Well, he used to run unopposed because he threatened to beat up any other candidates, said Niles. Technically, I don't think that's cheating. But for the last couple of years, Holly has run against him and lost. You lost to that guy? Miles asked Holly. Twice, said Niles. How? said Miles. The, ca the class president counts the votes, Holly said. That's a dumb rule, said Miles. The class president makes the rules, said Holly. That's ridiculous, said Miles. If you know you're not going to win, why do you run? Ah, I'm a protest candidate, said Holly. My very presence in the race exposes the injustice of the system. Plus, we get to miss class to write our speeches. Miles was impressed. Where is the teacher? asked Stuart, who was sitting to Miles' right. I mean, the bell rang three minutes ago, and there's nobody here. This is hilarious. Nobody laughed. Are we supposed to teach ourselves? Just then, Miss Shandy walked into the classroom. Sorry I'm late. Miss Shandy tossed a canvas tote onto the big desk. There was a car blocking the entrance, and I had to go around the back. That car was crazy, Stuart said. Thank you, Stuart, said Miss Shandy, without looking up from filling out a seating chart. I hope everybody likes where they're sitting. These will be your seats for the year. Except you, Josh. Why don't you move up from the back and take this desk in the front row? Josh looked mad for a split second and then grinned. Sure, he said. I can move up to the front row. I'm not sure that my dad, Principal Barkin, would want me to move, though. He always tells me to be decisive to make a decision and then stick with it no matter what. Move, Josh, Miss Shandy said. Okay, Miss Shandy, I'm moving. Of course, I'm going to listen to you. You're the teacher of this class, after all. However, I will be telling my dad that you made me move, even though I'd already found a seat in the back. Miss Shandy's smile tightened a bit. Now, Josh, Miss Shandy said. But, said Josh, no arguing. I am not arguing, Josh said, but it might be worth mentioning that I'm the class president, so Josh. Josh picked up his backpack. You know, I could tell my dad you were late and you'd probably get fired. He's the principal. I know he is, said Miss Shandy. Her smile tightened a little bit tighter. He's your boss. Miss Shandy turned around to the board and began writing her name in big letters. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Miss Shandy. While Miss Shandy was finishing up the Y in Shandy, Josh hit Miles in the head with his backpack on his way to the front of the class.